today is the I'm just trying to plug in my phone so it doesn't run out of battery uh, today is the 17th of August and we are going to be drawing live here on YouTube my YouTube channel if you um, aren't subscribed and you'd like to subscribe just press the subscribe button and also remember to like and if you want to comment then the comments are open so you can chat a little bit with us um today's prompt is quilting and um hi Meryl Meryl is here it's going to be a colorful one because we are using some images from our friend C who is um, a craft extraordinaire and does some quilting of her own. So she has allowed us to, um, to look at her quilts and we can do some abstract imager imagery from her quilts, unless you want to do a very, a very realistic one. So here's one of her quilts. These are on the Padlet for our Patreon members, or if you want to go to C's page, it's c.rand, and you can have a look at the quilts that we'll be working, we'll be working from. So, good morning, C. C is here with us. Um, so I'm going to, I have a couple of sketchbooks that I'm going to work with because I'm going to work with paint as well as some dry mediums and, um, it's not going to look like this, but just expect to be, there'll be a lot of colors happening in this morning's um, live video. Janan says, good morning, good morning, Janan. Uh, she says, I'm visiting with my dad, but wanted to say hello. Have a great day. Love to all. Uh, sending lots of love back, Janan, and big hugs. Meryl says, where is the mini video for your new art supplies? <laughs> that new vin mini video for my new art supplies is still in my um, possession because I haven't had five minutes to just sit down and upload it. And the five minutes that I have had, I think I'm a little jet lagged. So I just like go Ugh, and collapse. Um, yesterday we were out all day, so I didn't get any, I didn't, come in the studio other than doing this piece yesterday so I didn't get any studio work done and I was really tired by the time we got home from visiting with my eldest daughter so I didn't um, upload it but I have got it and I it's ready to upload so I'll be doing that today sorry Meryl I know you're probably looking for it um, if you didn't see my reel this morning, there's a little bit of a sneak peek of what we are going to be doing or drawing from on Saturday morning. We are going to Itemote, or you guys are coming to Itemote with me. And um, it was a beautiful outing that I was lucky enough to do with my mother and my daughter. And I'm gonna put this also in our Patreon, um, I'll scan this in so that you guys can all see this as well because it's really interesting. This is part two. We're going to be doing the interior in part two of our session, which will probably happen next week because we have item moat at 8 a.m. on Saturday. We have Cornwall in the afternoon and then we're going to do a London sketch and draw. So we'll have three sketch and draws this weekend. I kind of squeezed in an extra one. So th three sketch and draws. You don't have to come to them if you're a Patreon. You can watch the replay and that's fine. Um, this morning we are going to be working from C's quilts. If you go to the Padlet, I have added I have added some of C's quilts that we can work from and I would love to start with the striped one and get some stripes on a page if that's good with you guys. Hola Patricia. Hi Janice. Um, hi Sarah. Sarah says, good morning. Did you get the to did you get to the art shop? No, I didn't get to the art shop in my daughter's town. Um, sorry. I thought, you know what? I have enough. 
if I go in there, I'll spend a lot of money and I just came back from England. I probably should wait until I need something. I have a couple of sketchbooks that I can fill for September. I may even actually this, um, this afternoon, I think I'm going to work on, or if I have time because there's drawn together today and there is the visual arts passage today. It's Thursday already. It's that Thursday feeling, everybody. Hi, good morning, Julie. Yes, this will be fun. So I'm going to open up my sketchbook. Hi, Marianne, how are you? And let's get started by working on some stripes from C's Quilt. Um, I'm going to pull out my gouache set. I'm gonna work with my Neo Colors later, not right now. And this is the one that I have replenished, so that's good. And I think we'll start with, I have things everywhere on my table. I thought I cleaned up and then it all seems to be very, very busy. Anyway, I was up very early this morning, as you can hear, I'm like, <laughs> what does Maria say? Like Maria said when she met me in Toronto, she's like, how many coffees do you have in the morning? You sound so awake and so like, like buzzing. Today I feel I'm buzzing. I haven't slept much. Um, jet lag is kicking in and I thought I was good yesterday, but um, no. So I've only had one coffee, but I feel very zzz. I feel buzzing. Good morning, Alexandra. Okay, so this is the image that we're gonna work from. So I want you to really look at um, not just the colors, but also the values of the colors because we have, if you, when you squint your eyes, you can see that there are some blues which are a lot lighter, some blues which are darker. So try and be aware of that when you're, when you're painting it. Um, you can go into detail with all the t patterns and everything, but I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes for this one and just work on color, colors, mixing, and having fun with, with that. Ah, ha, ha. C says, this one is sold. Oh, where's the image? It's in the Padlet, um, Patricia. I put them in the Padlet this morning. Okay, so I'm gonna set the timer just so that we can work on the other ones as well. And the time is starting now. Um, yeah, so I, we had a lovely trip down to Guelph yesterday. It was really lovely to see, to see Miss Ashley. We went to her workplace and had some lunch together. I hope she's feeling better today because I think she was coming down with a little cold, but it could be just, it could be allergies. Hopefully it's just that, not a cold. How was your day, everybody, yesterday? guys get up to anything okay I want this one to be slightly darker but now I've got this color out I feel like it's gonna be oh no that's okay so even if I don't have if I finish these colors and I want to add extra colors I guess I can oh you know what I should probably be doing having a look and seeing if there's a repeat of a color as well did you find the images Patricia they're in the August Padlet. So C, tell us a little bit about the quilts that you make. I love the, the most recent one, which was made out of handkerchiefs. Um, if you do have to plan ahead and put the color somewhere, just look at the approximate location of where that color is repeated and then just put it in. You can squeeze in even if they're not exactly the right um, placement. If it's not exactly the right placement, it's okay. This is just gouache, it's the Karen Dash gouache set. If you're watching and you don't know which set this is, it's very handy. Ah, uh, Patricia says, yes, I had to reboot the Padlet. How's France, Patricia? 
Okay, and she is gonna ask. Uh, she's gonna answer how these, how these beautiful um, quilts come about. Are they all commissions, or are they? Um, I think you mentioned before that they're you use scrap materials that you have that you've done other projects with, and you have them lying around. And then do people purchase them because they follow you and they love them or are they a commission? We want to know, we want to know. Maybe C has us on mute. Or maybe there's just a really big delay. Okay, there's a couple of darker blues that I can put in as well. That one's a little bit more purple. There's one right at the end here I'm going to put. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, that the lines are not all straight. C says, I have made quilts since I can remember. I started collecting fabrics for retirement, so I have a ton. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I'm sure that's nice to have a project that you can constantly do. And I think you also mentioned that, do you, um, do you put the batting in? What the back, what's the back side called of the quilt? And is it the batting in between? The quilt, um, what do you call it when you go over with the stitches? I am not a quilter, can you, can you tell? Okay, some mauve, I'm gonna get some mauve in here because we have this mauve color in between. There's one there. Oh, I should have put a blue on this side too. I'm gonna come back and put a dark blue. You're halfway, halfway done. If you're, if you're working on this particular quilt, we're halfway through the time allotted for the quilt. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. It's kind of a mix between a red and a pink, so I'm going to put it as this color. And there really aren't any more of those pinky. Maybe I'll add a tiny little bit of red as well. There we go. And then there's a bright yellow next to it. I'm going to wait to do the bright yellow and add another darker blue right here. Because the yellow has to go in between. And there's a larger blue on the side of here. Much larger. Anybody else quilt maker here? I think I should start making some quilts only because I have a lot of material left over from art camps and you know summers of playing around with fabrics with the kids that would do art camp with me. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of green over here. I think it's going to have to be a wider one. These colors remind me of the sea. Maybe not so much the red, but all the blues they do. It's very pretty, see? And then a greener one. See, says mostly machine quilting. Uh, Marianne says, I've made a few. That looks like you've made a lot. Sounds like it's, you've made a lot there. 
Okay, I'm missing a purple. I need to put a purple in. I'm going to put a thinner green here. A very wonky thinner green. And I need a purple. Just add a little bit of blue to this purple. Get this in here. And the nice thing about gouache is that they don't run the same as as um, watercolors. They don't have that bleed to them, which I really like. Because that can be a little bit um, frustrating when you... Okay, and I have three yellows left, so that's all I have to do. Yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating. We'll do. I'll do one in watercolors as well, because I'd like to see the difference. I just got to be a little bit more... Um, conscious of placement and letting things dry in between. So we're almost at the minute left mark. And you can see even just by doing a 10 minute color study, we could do this once a day and just open up a book. We've done this with with um, we've done this with recipes you can do this with whatever is in front of you look what the larger amount of that color is you could do this out in nature just do a color study and it's nice and relaxing and something that everybody can do okay so this is C's quilt sorry I think I've got my do I have my let me brighten that up for you all. Here's C's quilt and here's my color study. It kind of looks like your quilt. Have you ever done it the other way around, C? Um, ah, C says, yes, the C is my inspiration. And she also says, this, this lady wanted blues and greens, so the yellow is really a spring green. Ah, okay. It probably has some green in that I can't really see. Um, have you ever done it the other way around where you, um, where you look at, for example, well, I guess this is it. You look at the sea, you look at the colors, you take that as inspiration. All right, I'm going to do a watercolor now. And we're going to go to, um, or I'm going to go to this one, which is a lot of fun. Now you don't have to do everything in here. Like you could zoom in and just do a portion of, which I think I may do. I may just block it in like that. And it's a good exercise for mixing. So um, if you... If you want to do the same as us, then um, go over to C's page and have a look at all the beautiful quilts that she has made. I am going to use my core set, the golden pink core set, and I am going to take a watercolour brush. If you have a square watercolour brush, that would be really handy. Ah, oh, do I have a square? I should have a square. I have a very, not a blunt, oh, I do have this one. I could use this one. Let's try that one. I bought a very cheap set of brushes. Oh, they're Daler and Rowney, or Rowney, but they're not, I don't think they're brilliant. Anyway, let's do another 10 minutes one. And it's all good practice for color mixing. Um, let's have a look how many squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So I'm going to just put a tiny little, um, I'm going to make it very, very loose, but I am going to have a guide. So because there's seven, that means there is one in the middle. So I have to go a little bit above and a little bit below. Oh, I'm going to be doing more than seven. Okay, so I may just adjust my image for however many squares that I've got. That's probably going to be easier. 
and I don't think I went to um, my metal was not metal okay I'm gonna adjust this and then one two three four five so again I need to go a little bit west of the middle and a little bit east of the middle and again my squares are not very square okay I'm gonna add an additional square not very good at this measuring am I that's okay it can be a little bit off as well have you guys seen a really lovely project that Courtney Ceruti did a couple of years ago and she um, did chairs with like little quilt stacks and I think the hashtag is quilt stacks um, if you're going to see Ceruti's Instagram and backtrack a couple of years you'll see these little miniature paintings I think they're only like this size um, but they're super cute and she did them in different mediums and they're a chair usually or a stool with a little stack of quilts on top they're very cute she's also done um, which is also lovely a collaboration with um, pooping rabbit do you know pooping rabbit he's on Instagram does beautiful paintings of animals and um, they collaborated where a pooping rabbit um, he does have a name pooping rabbit um, he would draw the animal and then Courtney would um, put a watercolor quilt on top of the animal like a sleeping animal super super lovely I love that series as well um, okay C says this is a horizontal quilt oh okay a horizontal quilt well does it matter which way you do the horizontals oh is the horizontal because it's a little bit off this was all five inch squares the currently hanky quilt is 16 oh wow that's bigger Julie says the quilts are very beautiful see I'm amazed okay I'm going to start because we're already at six minutes so I'm a little bit slow I'm gonna choose the colors that are very obvious and very bright first like this red so I'm gonna put my reds down first and I think I'll put the square of the red and then what I'll do is I'll come in and um, so count down one two three four five one two three four and then this one is going to be down here I think this is going to be the easiest way for me to do it I'll just go from one to the other color and then one two three four one two three and this one is going to be off the page which is also okay one two three one two three I know that these can be a little bit darker but you know because we're working with watercolor you can always go over the watercolor for example here I can adjust and just layer another layer over the watercolor if I wanted to or if you really want to be particular and start doing the um, the folds and the curves in your quilt then you just have to adjust your colors as you go so for example here there's a little bit of a crease so I'm going to add that like that this one there's creases on the side here like it's not completely flat so that's it's kind of nice actually I think this one's going to take me a little bit longer than than the 10 minutes that I thought it would take Oh, the stripe is horizontal okay gotcha okay I'm gonna go to some blues I pick up some blues that I've got here um, there are quite a few of these lovely turquoise blues a little bit dark because there are few combinations of 
combos of turquoise plus a little bit of green. So if I add a tiny little bit of green in this one. So when you're working with watercolor as well, we talked a little bit about the bleed and how gouache doesn't bleed with watercolor as long as either you keep that tiny little edge away from, like the edges away from each other, um, you can avoid the bleed or just wait till it dries and then you'll be fine. Uh, I did, Patricia. Patricia said, did you gesso the playing cards before painting? Yeah, but I wanna to chat to you all about the playing card thing um, in our Patreon meet because I think we may have to sand um, the playing cards because they do have a really, oops, I almost spilled all my water. I don't know where the playing card has gone, but um, the ones that I was using, they're very laminated. So I think a little bit of a sand and then gesso would work a lot better. <clears throat> and I did them on the back side of just some really plain ones because I thought it would be nice to actually be able to play with the playing cards or either play with the playing cards or to do, I was thinking a swap with you all. So for example, if somebody has the same playing card as you that you have um, painted or embellished, it could be, it could be um, collage as well. I was thinking we could also collage these playing cards. Ooh, that's gone a bit large. See, this is no reflection on how beautiful your your um I'm gonna I'm gonna correct this. No reflection on how beautifully made your quilt is because I can't draw squares apparently today. Yeah, I think the playing card project is gonna be quite a fun one that we can do throughout the next Two months or month and a half two months just a little project to keep us all fresh okay my squares are totally off totally totally off let's make a little bit more of a darker purple i'm going to put this one down here You could also make this into a mixed media piece where you, um, where you add a few details after the fact. Yes, Patricia says definitely sand them. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. If you have one of those automatic sanders that just sit on a, on a plinth or whatever you call it and on and it's attached to the table and it just goes round and goes and then you can put the card on it like that and go that would be good or if you have a hand sander for walls you could set that up on your table clamp it and then just do the card over the top um because they're small right they're a little bit tricky Okay, let's get some yellow on because it's one of the lighter colors. There are some whites on here too, but I'm gonna get the yellows on and my yellow is not very clean. I may have to change. This is definitely a uh, spring green yellow. It's what we wanted in the last one. Let's add a little bit of this to it. Mm, no, now it's become mustard and that is your 10 minutes. Well, I didn't get much done in the 10 minutes. I'm going to continue with this one, just having fun mixing colors. Marianne said, just looked up Pooping Rabbit, the name, yeah, the name caught my attention, LOL. Michael McConnell, um, his work is beautiful. Thank you for mentioning. I see the animals sleeping under quilts, very sweet. And Saruti's quilt stacks, gorgeous. Yeah, two wonderful people I met whilst down in San Francisco when I was, when I was um, 
recording for a creator bug. Courtney used to, I'm not sure if she still does, she used to organize a sketch, sketch and meet, kind of like a, or a sketch and drink, um, once a month or once every two months in San Francisco and um, I, she was wonderful to organize one when I went down there and um, Mike was there as well so I got to chat with him and he is a like if you look at his work he has come like he's really dug deep into continuing um, what he loves to do and just uh, it's evolved so much over the past couple of years um, and he's been having exhibitions and um, he does open galleries in San Francisco so if you're in or near San Francisco definitely go to his um, open house that he has okay I only see two oranges but I do see this one down here which is one, two, three, one, two, three, and then here, which is black and orange. I'm just going to choose the orange. No, they all have patterns. Uh, did everybody, oh, talking about quilts, did you see um, Arona from Buku? Buku here in Canada. She has a new book coming out. You can pre-order it and it is called Contemporary Quilt Making or Contemporary Quilts. I'm not sure if it's a quilt making or quilts. I'll have to check. Anyway, super exciting and I've done this wrong. I can just see now. Hang on. I need a dark, I need a much darker color here. I'm just going to use the dark purple and put that here um if you go to her page buku b-o-o-k-h-o-u she is the um maker of this pouch for example and these pouches she does a lot of um print work she also got the craze of um, punch needling going again and yeah she's she's does a lot of she does the mending the um, visual mending there's a book of visual mending anyway so if you like what she does she has that book coming out soon um, love the cover it looks really fresh and I really like her quilt making as well she uses little scraps as well love contemporary quilts Sue says um, and Janice says rather than paint quilts this morning I'm working on my quilt for this month's creative bug class with Heidi Parks ah yes yeah, she has another class doesn't she anybody else doing the Heidi Parks class that's such a good idea Is it another story top quilt or is it different um, this month? Okay, that needs to be blue. I need to go up, so red. I missed, I messed up here. This one should have been white. Oh well. I'm kind of making my own quilt here. I hope you don't mind, see. I need some pinks. Or some greens. Let's have a look. I'll get some greens going. Lots of water on the brush here, so I'm going to have to use this in many places. Way too much water.
Yeah, Janice, let us know. Is it a story top quilt again or is it different, the class that you're doing? Or is it the same? No, she has a new one, right? That's what you're working on, the new one. Because I saw your last one, which was really pretty. Okay, grey. Need to add a little bit of purple to orange. And that could make brown or grey. I kind of made a... Well, I've definitely gone off off my box here and just started doing my own colours. Let's get a pink going. I should probably change this water as well. I have a pink here. Um, <laughs> Patricia says, do we have to follow C's colors because I'm so off? Yeah, I'm off too right now. No, I don't think it matters. Janice says it's called Love Letters. Oh, yes. And we're working on individual squares rather than a whole cloth quilt. Do you, will you end up, um, will you end up working on a whole quilt? Like, will you put it together, you think? I know that Faith was, um, I think they had a, did they have a live together recently? Faith and Heidi? I think I watched it. Or they just chatted a little bit about the love letters. I should watch that. I really love watching those in the background. And then maybe finding time to do something from it. Okay, need to put the pink here. Don't want it to run, so I'm gonna leave a tiny little gap. This one has run into here, you can see. So I'm going to just correct this quilt and make it a little, oh, this, square and make it a little bit darker. I also want to take away, um, I do not have a cloth on the table. I want to take away some of this water because it's a little bit excessive. There we go. And this one too down here. Okay. Janice says, yes, the squares will be pieced together to make a quilt top. Pearly is doing one, but it's, it is adding her prompts to a single piece of fabric. Oh yes. So I think it's open to interpretation. Very cool. Looking forward to seeing all of yours. Okay. Why is there not a different green here? I feel like there should be another green. Maybe I have to mix it. Let's try this and the turquoise. Yeah, that's better. I mean, it's very bright or very evergreen. Emerald. Okay, there's two. I'm going to add this one down here as well. It should be a blue, but I'm adding it. And I think the whites could be just a very pale blue instead of white. I'm a little bit lost. Anybody else lost in their quilting painting? I have, I have become lost, I think. So there's two whites over here, but I don't really want to do them white. So I'm going to do this one, this one, just a little bit off. And then this one also a little off white. 
And then I think I'm going to just add a tiny little bit of pink and put this one here as an off-white, which really is a lot less white than it could be. I need some blues up here. So I do like the white ones, but the white, but I don't really want to have too many whites on here. I need another pink. See, I think I've gone wrong. Red. Oh, there's a pink there. The green underneath there. Oh, that could be a little bit bluer. I think it just helps to work from a quilt so you kind of have, you don't um, overthink the areas of where you want to put the colours. I think it would be easy just to overthink it and then you'll end up with something which isn't as random as you want. Oh, that's what I think anyway. Let's go for a little bit of a pinky purple up here. And down here, another pink here. There are very few whites, so any color will be great. Thank you. And Julie says, I'm doing pencils and pastels only because I'm just back home and haven't taken my paints out. Julie, this is why you need an art room so your paints are always out. Patricia, did you take a lot of, um, a lot of paints over with you or art materials over with you this time when you went to France? I hope you did. Okay, this one needs to be a little bit bluey green, so I'm going to get that one in down here. That definitely is green and not bluey green. And also here. And then I'm a little confused where this is up here. So we've got the red, the blue there. Oh, and that needs to be a darker purple. Let's put a dark here then. nice thing about these is that you really practice your color mixing. Mine doesn't really look like C's though. Uh, Julie says, um, I know that's what I keep telling everyone, but I have to wait until my kids move out. Mm. C says both quilts have a batik turquoise um, to them. Actually the last three quilts. That's this one, right? Very pretty. Okay, dark pink and then like a pinky. This is going to also be a darker pink. I'm just taking the colors from the flowers. And this was supposed to be, I'm going to make this a little bit of a bluer gray. I kind of switched these two colors around. That's going to be a white, but there is going to be a little bit of crease in it. So it doesn't actually look dead, dead white. This one, I'm a little lost also. Oh, this is to be a purple, a very light purple. There we go. And then this one is going to be a blue. Mm, hopefully the purple doesn't run. And then more of a pink up here. And we will, this 
one is, this one has a lot of colors. I think I can add a green here. And then next to the pink is definitely a blue. Like a turquoisey blue. We are getting there. Next to the red is a pink and I've kind of skipped one so I'm going to make that another, oh another red will not be good. I'm going to make it like an orange, like a mustard. These cool paints aren't like regular watercolours, they're very very pigmented so it's not easy to lift um, the paint once you put it down. It's not like the uh, Winsor & Newtons are quite easy to lift. You can't get white white but you can you can get close to it. Okay, I'm gonna just not have a white one up here. And then put a few creases in, in different areas. If it's slightly darker than the colour, it almost goes over like a little, um, like a filter, just a layer, very light. I don't think you have to do this with all of them, but it's quite nice to give it a little bit of movement, I think. How are we doing for time? Ten minutes left. Oh. C says, turtle bad spelling. I think she was referring to both quilts have batik tortoise, tortoise in them. Is it supposed to be turquoise? Batik turquoise, actually the last three quilts. Okay, I think I'm good with this one. So we've done this one and we've done this one. Let's have a look at the other one. Um, there are also there's this lovely image. So I found a couple of images of three ladies and old. This is an old image from the Provincial Archives of Alberta of three ladies sewing. I don't think they're actually quilting. This one is a lovely image too. I love the texture on this one. Is that done with, that's done with a quilting machine, isn't it? And that's a very thin quilt, so I guess they don't have to be big and puffy, do they? Here is... Is this... See, is this yours? Who was... Whose is this? Somebody posted this. I'm trying to see if I recognise, and I can't remember who it was. Somebody with a cat. They said trying to fill it, finish a quilt. Uh, we have this one, which is also blues. Lovely. Uh, I think I'm going to work a little bit on this one there. No turquoise, she says. Okay. So with this one, I think it would be nice just to work with dry mediums and just do a page looking at the squares, the colors, etc. So he said, none of mine, but my girls try to do that too. So these are 16 inch handkerchiefs. So that is, that's quite big. This is 12. 
the 16 would be like this. They're huge handkerchiefs. Are women's handkerchiefs called hankies and men's handkerchiefs? Do we know? Maybe I'll choose one and do that one. If I zoom in, I kind of like the flower one, the heart one. I like this one at the top here. That's pretty. Okay. I'm going to do a mix of um, watercolor and a mix of neo colors, I think, or maybe woodies. I'm just going to do the edge. The hankies are smaller. Okay, so it's not 16 by 16. Or is that what hankies are usually smaller than handkerchiefs? Oh, there's a bird. driving through the countryside yesterday because I decided not to go the highway back from Guelph and the trees were gorgeous and they were already turning isn't that crazy it's not even the end of August and there are some trees that are already turning oh does that mean we're gonna have an early winter anyway I definitely want to go back in September sometime and um, I know that the landscape is going to be very pretty Okay, there's some very pretty flowers which are bully like this. Um, zooming in really is not very clear but I'm still going to look at the colours like this. There's some grey, I have a silver, a silver woody which is probably quite perfect for this area here. This, oh, the square itself is 16 by 16, but so smaller, but some smaller, but the so smaller. Oh, okay. Now I understand, I think. We have six minutes left. I know, I didn't time this one. Just really looking at colors today. Not, not worrying too much about it being absolutely perfect. one not yellow but this Chinese yellow which I really like and then I have these woodies which are 
I was going to go to the art store yesterday and buy some more woodies because I know that they sell them down there in the Guelph shop. But I'm okay with what I've got. I have, like, really, the new colours are very similar to the woodies and I don't really need anything more. Alright, I think I am going to add a little bit of watercolour to these, or water to these rather, and just clean up some of the scratchiness. I think my birds really look like birds. Let's have a look. I'm going to get my 14B and just do a little bit more of an outline. I really don't see um, the detail in these, but I'm going to make them into birds, even if they're not birds. I'll do an upside down one here. I think I'll owe Tinu with some of my favourites. <laughs> See, I think you're, you're right. Do you speak into your phone to text? Sometimes I know that when I text and speak into my phone, or my phone just like wants to basically write what it wants to write and I don't like, and then I press send and everything goes to part. I don't quite understand all the words there. Um, so as I said before, today is Thursday. So today we have the Visual Arts Passage. We have, that's at 7 p.m. Eastern. We have um, Drawn Together. Oh, they're actually doing portraits from Earth's World today. So that'll be fun. Um, I know that... Rita always draws from Earth's world, or a lot of times draws from Earth's world. Um, I haven't really explored Earth's world. Maybe that could be something that we do on on our cards if we if you wanna. Um, but I think the card idea, the the um, playing card idea, would be really great if you come up with an idea that you really want to do personally because. You know, it'll be a 52, 52, 52 day project, 52 day project, and um, you need to be doing something that you really enjoy. So, for example, Jennifer, maybe you want to do another 50 chairs. Um, and I think it's nice, or maybe somebody wants to just do birds again for 50 days. I think that would be nice too, if you don't have to do portraits. Um, Maybe just want to explore different colors. Maybe you can create 50 new colors. Well, my hour is up. Thank you so much for joining. It was a quiet little morning with a few of you, which was really lovely. And um, remember to like, you guys. You don't like. You need to like, like, like like the video 
so that I know that you've seen the video. Um, and yeah, if you want to draw from your quilts, then uh, I do. I think it's a lovely idea. I should probably go over with not black, but with a color. I think that would be nicer. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Have a really good day. This was a colorful morning. And thanks for the likes. Bye, everybody. Bye.